thank you all for being here. Um, I have to start, I, if I don't start out thanking everyone who's been involved in this process, I'll forget to do it. So let me do that kind of collectively. Not knowing exactly who has been involved in the process, I don't know exactly who to thank. I think Natasha is probably the person, oh, Carol. <laughs> That's, so um, as, you, as Carol told you, I was supposed to be here a couple of weeks ago, but the weather in Houston got bad and tornadoes came through, stopped the flight, so um, fortunately I'm able to be here with you now. Um, and I think it's, it was fortunate that I got held up because it gave me a little bit more time to think about what it is that I want to do this afternoon with you all and how I want to spend the brief period of time I have. Uh, Pete Kraska, who has been a friend, colleague, uh, student, and mentor of mine, uh, let me know that the process was intentionally vague, what I was supposed to be doing, and that I'm supposed to be fairly informal, and I hope that I will be fairly brief so that there'll be time for questions and some discussion, either you and me or across the aisles or across the tables. One of the things I try to do in every environment that I find myself in is encourage dialogue and encourage discussion, and so Sometimes I think that's the best role that a professor can make, can, can play, is to stop talking sometimes and let other people talk. So I have prepared a hopefully brief presentation. And I say hopefully brief because this is the first time I'm formally coming through it. Come on, there are all kinds of seats here. Don't be bashful. Um, and this is the first time I'm formally walking through this presentation. And so I say hopefully brief, and I promise you that I'll leave time for questions, even if I have to stop my presentation early so that we can have some time to discuss the issues. As Carol said, what I'm here to talk about is, I guess, roughly the death penalty. You could say that my, my obsession over the last 20 years, um, most importantly over the last 10 years, has been the death penalty. I live in, not only do I live in Texas, but I live in Huntsville, Texas, which is where Sam Houston State University is located. If you haven't had the privilege of being there, I'm going to show you some images of what the, the corner where the executions take place looks like, which is where I spend a lot of time. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about how I spend that time and why I go down to the corner there. Um, but Huntsville, Texas is not only where Sam Houston State University is, but it's also the headquarters for the Texas Department of Criminal Justice's Institutional Division, read prison, and that's also the Walls Unit, which is where all of the executions that, are take, that take place in Texas are carried out. Since 1927, a law was passed in Texas in an effort to prevent counties from simply convicting a person of capital murder and hanging them the next day uh, the Texas legislature in 1927 centralized the location of all executions by law in Huntsville, Texas. And if it ever, it'll require a constitutional amendment to move executions from Huntsville, Texas. And um, it also happens to be where one of the premier universities in criminal justice is located. And I'm here to talk to you about the death penalty, but more importantly, to hopefully get us to think about us as a society and us as people and what the death penalty does and or means to us. I know Kentucky has an active death penalty system. Texas is beyond compare. And so a lot of what I'm going to be reflecting on comes from my experiences in Texas, but I also know that there's some salience to the, to the Kentucky crowd as well. I've titled my talk Reflections on the Abattoir, and I've given the definition of an abattoir for those of you who are not French. And f in, in Texas, it's against the law to talk with French dialect even because of the whole problem with Iraq. And so I'm able to use this word in Kentucky. And for you can't, if you can't read it, an abattoir is a slaughterhouse, something likened to a slaughterhouse. The, f the, the sentence that they give us to exemplify its usage is, the hand of God and mankind's self-inflicted blows seem equally heavy, giving the strong cumulative impression of the world as an abattoir. It's from the old French, which means abate or strike down. I subtitle it, Contemplations About Justice from the Corner of Life's Failing Condition. 
because one of the things that I propose to you and one of the things that I'll leave you with at the end of this presentation is my sense that with the death penalty as a, as a foundation for a system of justice, what we are doing with that system of justice is futile and hopeless, that the death penalty ultimately represents a sense of futility and hopelessness. And that as long as we continue to have a, a system of justice that is predicated upon the availability of that sanction, what we're basically saying to ourselves and to the world, and more importantly to our children, is that it's useless, that there really isn't much we can do to confront the problem of the horrible kind of crimes that often lead people to the death chamber. Um, but there's also a horrible kind of action that occurs in the death chamber. And that horror takes place with such regularity in the United States, and more importantly in Texas, in my hometown, that it, it is an abattoir. We have a slaughterhouse less than two blocks from the College of Criminal Justice at Sam Houston State University. I, it is literally, it is two blocks away from my office where we conduct these executions on a regular basis. My particular presentation is really inspired by the work of Albert Camus. And if you're not familiar with Albert Camus, shame on your faculty and your professors. Um, I, I was introduced to Camus as an undergraduate student, probably in a literature class or perhaps in a philosophy class. Albert Camus, Albert Camus was a French Algerian journalist, uh, philosopher, playwright, poet, and essayist, and a, a, a journalist. He wrote essays for popular news magazines and news coverage. And he, one of his most famous essays is entitled Reflections on the Guillotine, which was actually first published in 1957. And it was published in a French, um, in, a, in a collection of essays that he and a colleague of his put together. And I believe it's important to, to draw from where Camus was, was writing, because Camus, if you're at all a little bit familiar with, uh, with literature and the role of philosophy and Camus' per particular position there, Camus is known as an existentialist. And the existentialist movement was really the beginning of, or maybe, the, maybe some people will say the heyday of, postmodern uh, critique in the literary field. And I, I'm, what I'm going to do today is try to confront the intellectual community that studies crime and justice to move beyond even postmodernism. And for I hope you all at the, at the undergraduate level, maybe, but certainly at the graduate level, will be able, to be able to relate to some of what I'm going to be talking about. And I'll have a real brief section where I'll talk about the issue of modernity and the principles of justice. But Albert Camus was drawn to write about the death penalty from an experience that his mother related to him when he, that, that occurred when Camus himself was an infant, probably Cora's age. He was less than a year old, and his father was was drawn to an, a public execution in Algeria. And that particular execution was the first execution that his father had ever attended. And his father, in, in Camus' word, words, his father awoke in the dark. And, and it's important to recognize that, that metaphor of darkness. He awoke in the dark one morning so that he could travel the distance necessary to be able to attend his first public execution. And he was pulled to that execution, according to Camus' mother, because of the particular horror associated with that execution. The execution was, it was a public execution of a man who had slaughtered an entire farm family, killing the mother, the father, and several children in the process. And it was a particularly brutal murder. And Camus' mother tells him that it was the murder of the child that really pulled Camus' father to the execution, and he was a righteous man, and he went to the execution with anger and with a great deal of, of hatred toward this murderer who had killed a child and a family so brutally. And his father got up in the dark to be able to travel there. And this is, these are Camus' words of how that witnessing that execution affected his father. 